Hey everybody, it's Dr. FF from Scholars Dental and in this video we're going to talk about five tips that will help you avoid any mistakes when you're registering for the AFK exam and will make your registration process a lot smoother. Just before we get into that, we have a few announcements. Um, we're going to mention when our starting dates or our starting times for our next courses. Our AFK will be in March 2023 and that's normal time for starting our AFK course could be in the beginning. We already have our schedule on the website. If uh, you want to register before that, you can and we'll send you the books early. That's something we do for all our students. Once they register for the course, we send them the books early so they could start reading before the course. And, um, you know, it, it helps to get one reading through before actual start of the course. Our AC, so this is AFK and our ACJ usually starts in March, but for the next one will be in Feb. Okay. And that's earlier than usual to maintain our, we have expanded the course. So it's going to mean uh, to maintain our three months kind of, uh, course length. We need it to start in Feb. So anyone that's considering the ACJ, just giving you a heads up that it will be starting earlier. Now for either of these, if you're interested, please schedule a consult. We offer free consultations. Um, for, for people that have any questions and want to really get a detailed plan, I, I do a consult with you online and we could now start doing it in person as well. That's another announcement I'll, I'll let you guys know about. But basically we do the consult and I discuss your plan and see what timing is the best timing for you to start your AFK and which exam to take based on, um, you know, your application, your approval, your, your lifestyle. So, so that's something we analyze and help you with. So if you're interested, book a free consultation and we could plan your NDEB process. Okay. The other announcement is we are also now st going to start offering the NDEC clinical skills. Um, we have opened our uh, new office. Um, you can see here is kind of the, the web page for it. Um, and these are the, the, this is the lab that we're going to use. So, and so we we'll also take consultations in person. So you know, let us know if you want to come and give us a visit and meet us in person. And we could do a consultation in person as well. We're offering some cool promos in December for the skills, um, which is a free promo actually, where anyone doing the exam could come in and start practicing. And we're offering as well work checks with those two weeks. So if you know anyone that is interested in that, you might be an AFK student, not yet. And this may not be important to you, but if you know anyone, that's interested and that's could be helpful to them. Let them know. And if you want to do a consult in person, let us know. We could arrange that. Just contact us on, uh, you know, on our email or, or, uh, number or in the link below where you can book the consult. And this is how the location area is. So you have, you know, enough parking. It's very comfortable. It's ground floor. So you don't have to climb or go upstairs or anything. Um, and hope to see you soon. So that's pretty much it for the announcements. Let's get now to the five tips. All right, so I'm just going to clear this here. Okay. There. And we're going to get to so the next AFK exam that's in Feb 2023, um February 1 and 2, 2023. You guys could see here that the registration date is November 22nd at 10 a.m. EST. So let's put that here. So November 22nd EST that's if I'm recording this today, that's tomorrow for me. Okay. And you have the, the exam after that is March, sorry, is, um, in August, 2023 and the registration date would be March. So this video may be also may also apply for that future exam, unless there's any changes, we'll update you on that. Um, so for this November registration, it's going for the Feb exam and of course, the March registration is going for the August exam in 2023, right? Now, the difference between these two is that the November is very cl uh, it's a lot closer to the exam date than the March one where you have a lot of space. So um, in, in, in that one, we'll, you know, probably cover it for another video. And we're also thinking about another video regarding virtual OSCE and so the NDEB so, uh, application support. We'll talk about that. So stay tuned for that. So what are the five tips for this exam? It's November 22nd, 10 a.m. EST. So tip number one. Okay, I'm just going to bring up. Okay, 
So the first thing I would say is if you want to make this smoother and successful for you, make sure you wake up early, prepared for that registration, right? So if it's 10 a.m., maybe wake up, you know, an hour or two before. Log into your profile, make sure everything is smooth, okay? So wake up early, right? Get on, get on your profile or log in maybe an hour early, right? And make sure that you're able to access your profile. This will help, you know, save you time and make sure you're off during that time. Not just like you're keeping it, you know, 10 minutes or something. So why not? You know, I've heard from uh, maybe 8 to 10 a.m. is an example, right? So 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., you know, keep four hours because sometimes from our experience, we've seen issues could happen among uh, or during the registration process. And you might be trying to, if something occurs and you need more time to, to try to get in and, and register, then you're not stressed because you're tight on time. So, sorry, to, I said 10 a.m. To, to 8 to 10 a.m. I meant 8 a.m. maybe to 1 p.m. Okay. So 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. E let's say EST. So make sure you convert the time correctly. If you're in a different time zone, if you're anywhere in Canada, like Vancouver or Calgary, or just anywhere with a different time, make sure you got the right time. Um, and you're waking up. Remember the registration is 10 AM. So you want to be up before that, be on your computer, be ready, no distractions, log into your profile and wait. And once it's the time, keep you refresh. And I don't know, we don't know yet how the NDEB connect is going to work. This is a new thing. This is why it's good to be prepared early. Okay, whatever surprises or something new is going to happen, at least you're, you're there early and you're prepared. Okay, so that's number one. Now, tip number two, for sure, I think hopefully you're all prepared for this, but make sure you have good and reliable internet. Okay, um, if you think your internet is not reliable and you're using some sort of weak Wi-Fi, don't rely on that. Um, I would say go to where you know there's good internet. If you have a library that you know they have good internet or if you have a friend that you know they have good internet or if you go somewhere and you study and you know the internet has always been good there. If you need to tether from your phone because your, net, your, your phone mobile provider is better than maybe another internet you're using, then tether from your phone. Whatever tethering means you're using the internet from your phone, not your phone, okay? I'll get to that tip as well about which device to use. But make sure you have good, reliable internet and that there's no, not going to be a disconnection. Make sure there's no major uploads or downloads that day, right? Don't do that at the same time you're registering so it doesn't slow your internet down. Keep the bandwidth free, right? So these things, I think, will make sure you're not going into any mistakes that's kind of, you know, could have been avoided. And tip number three, I would say, is the devices. Don't use tablets or phones. Okay. Don't use iPads. Don't use tablets. Um, don't use phones. All these, I'm going to put an X on use either a desktop, which I like per to prefer like a desktop or PC and PC, or if you want a good laptop. Okay. And, and a laptop that's like, not like a, you know, something you feel like it's kind of like a phone, but a laptop. Okay. Not like a tablet with a keyboard. Okay. Use an actual laptop. And if you're using a laptop, make sure at least it's charged and better plugged in because you want that power. You don't want it to slow down. You don't want it to be, you know, uh, preserving energy and being slow. You want it to be plugged in, reliable, no risk of disconnecting. You know, you're not, you're not worried because you, maybe you're on from 8 a.m. And maybe your laptop is two hours. Maybe it's battery. Maybe you have a laptop for a long time and the battery starts draining faster. And then the two hours you're stressed, maybe it takes you an hour to register. Who knows what's going to happen, right? In this new platform before we had crashes on the NDB website and people were, you know, still trying to register two hours after. Okay. Or three hours, right? So, so make sure you're plugged in that you don't need to look for a plug during this time. Okay. So that's tip number three. Um, tip number four is the payment part. So make sure you know how you're going to pay. Most likely it's going to be credit card. Now make sure you have your credit card handy. Okay. You have it ready that you're ready to pay. Okay. Before don't, don't look for your credit card. Once you enter the platform, once you see the registration, have it right on you and make sure you have enough credit limit. Okay. So this is important. 
you don't want these surprises to happen. Some, some of you may not know if you're new here, you don't know how these kind of things work. Um, for example, if your credit card limit is, is 500, which is, you know, could be for a beginning credit card and the payment for the NDEB for the AFK exam is a thousand. So you might try and they'll tell you, maybe you can't do that. There's an error or something, right? How do you fix that? Okay, well, one way to fix it is you could borrow someone's credit card that has a more limit, maybe it has more than that, so up to a thousand or more, right? So maybe you borrow someone's credit card, e-transfer them the money, then do the payment, for example, if you, a friend that you know or a family member. The other way is you could increase your credit limit by sending money to the credit card. So if you go to your bank account, let's say you send a thousand from your bank account to your credit card. Now your credit card for that time has 1500 amounts. Okay. It doesn't mean your credit limit always is 1500. Just, it just means it keeps it, you know, a tab on it. So it says, okay, well your credit limit is 500, but now you gave us a thousand. So you have right now 500 credit limit plus you gave us a thousand here. So you have 1500 you could use, right? So then you could at least pay that. Then you actually didn't use the 500 from the, so kind of, you kind of use the credit card as storage of money. Okay. You could do that. You could send money to your credit card, increase it that way. Um, and then pay. Now, I don't know if all credit cards work the same. I don't know if they all have the same system or allow it or not. Maybe you want to try it first before you do that. So these are some ideas, but just make sure your credit limit is not going to be a surprise for you on the day of registration. Okay. Um, now tip number five, which is one very important one, which people, a lot of people forget to do and not think of is know which locations you want before. Okay. Don't wait until you get all the locations. And now you're like thinking, Hmm, which one do I want now? Because there's a good chance you might not find your favorite location. Let's say you live in Toronto and you're like, I want to go to Toronto. What if Toronto's all booked? Now you need to think about um, your second location and you might not have enough time to think now before I, I actually continue, I'm going to pause here. Why some people may be like, why is this so such an issue? Um, and those of you that know, understand what I'm talking about, all these tips and why, but I forgot to mention, oh, by the way, the seats could get booked within the first 40 minutes, all of them. Okay. This is why we do this. Okay. This is why we give these tips. So some of you that are new to the process that are not really aware or don't know yet what's going on from the past, um, you might not get a seat if you don't register quickly. There, there there's a chance that all the seats get booked in the last few cycles, it's been that all the seats are getting booked within the first hour. Okay. That's the reason we're doing this. So you want to save much time, you know, as much as you can time while you're, while, when the uh, registration opens, you want to have all the time just to do the process. You don't want to think about anything. Okay. You're already trying to discover a new platform. That's enough. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get, we, we help our students in our WhatsApp group, you know, that we get, uh, live feedback was happening. And uh, so if there's like a crash or a page not opening, we see it, they tell us about it. Right. So that's common. And you, you, you have those issues to deal with probably, but so you don't want to deal with these issues. You want to have these figured out. So what I would do is the locations, I would name my top four or five locations. Okay. Location priority. Number one, let's say I want to go to Toronto first. Okay. Number two, maybe if there's something in Ottawa for second, if I can't, I don't know what's third for me. Hmm, then I want to think maybe I want Vancouver. So you have to decide which locations come to you priority, right? And then that way, when you go in to the platform and you see the location, you go, okay, let me see Toronto. Okay. There's no Toronto, Ottawa. There's no Ottawa. You know, which what's your first, your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth. Now, what locations are there? So we, we don't know always what they're going to do, but in the last two cycles, we could give you that. So we, we kind of have an extra tip here to show you what locations, um, they have brought before now, just to keep this or, or disclaimer here that they might not repeat the exact same. Okay. Just in case they might not repeat the exact same. Oops. That's going to take some time if I do that. So I'll just leave it like this and start drawing here. So, um, let me take out the pen. So what locations in the last, uh, two cycles, of course they had, we know they have pro metric. 
Oh, it's too thin. Sorry about that. Let me just change to a brush. So they had pro metric, right? And they had paper based. Now just know that pro metric centers will have less quantity. They'll take less people, um, right? Because they're on computers. So what are the, the locations that we have uh, from before? Okay, before we had on, in Ontario, we had, of course, areas in Ottawa and GTA. So I think that's how it shows up in your, and it used to show up in the profile that GTA, then you choose it. And then later on, they'll contact you with a specific location maybe. And then you have Ottawa. And these have both Prometric and paper-based. And you have then Quebec, mainly Montreal. So it's in Montreal, basically. So in province Quebec, you'll be looking at Montreal to go to, to do the um, exam. And that and Montreal has both as well, both Prometric and paper-based. Um, you also had, um, I'm just going through this list, Saskatchewan. Okay, I'm just going to say that. And it's in Saskatoon. Okay. And that's also both, meaning Prometric and paper-based. Um, we have also BC, British Columbia, which in it's in Vancouver. Okay, so Vancouver, BC also has both. So now you know which cities most likely, right? And then you have in Alberta, I'm just going to put Al, okay? You have in Calgary, it's Prometric, okay? But in Edmonton, it's paper-based, okay? So... So now you know, okay, cool. Now that, that's, again, a disclaimer. That's what happened in the last two cycles. Could it be different this cycle? Yes. But maybe this is kind of something you could use as a guide first, right? Um, after that, you have we have Nova Scotia as well. Nova Scotia. And which is in Halifax, basically. Halifax, Nova Scotia. And that is, pay, uh, sorry, Prometric. Okay, and those are the areas. So those are locations in Canada. So you have in Canada, you have Ontario, Ottawa, or GTA, both Quebec, Montreal, or Mont let's do it, Montreal, Quebec, both. You have Saskatoon and, and Saskatchewan, both, and you have uh, Vancouver, BC, both. And then in Alberta, you have two locations. In Calgary, you have Prometric, and in Edmonton, you have paper based. Then in Nova Scotia or Halifax, Nova Scotia, you have Prometric. Now, outside of Canada, the ones we know, let me go up here with the red, okay? We have USA, Buffalo. So Buffalo's near Niagara Falls, but wouldn't be too much of a drive if you're close by there. Um, and Seattle as well, okay? So Seattle and Buffalo, and both of these ended up are prometric, okay? And then you have Australia. Australia. In, you have two locations, Melbourne and Sydney. Okay, Melbourne and Sydney. Okay, so I'm just going to put Mel and Sydney. And those ones are Prometric as well. So you can see the ones are international are Prometric only. Then you have New Zealand in Auckland. And it's also Prometric. So now you know the locations that from the previous two cycles were, uh, were on the website to register for. And these are them so you could use these as uh, for like a reference first what's your priority among these and if you don't find maybe you'll find something new on tomorrow on your registration day maybe you find you don't maybe they're the same maybe one of these are not there then you could modify but at least you know your priority most likely the ones in canada are going to be the same um i believe most of them will be the same if anything they might add more that's all okay so that's pretty much it for the five tips um and and once you make the payment, you might not know right away the feedback of the payment. So we had that issue. Sometimes people paid and they're like, I don't know if it worked or not, right? So just be patient with that. Um, you might find a message in your profile. You might not even find a message in the profile where you registered and you might get it back an email. Okay, so you know, try not to panic about that and just look in, in all look in your profile, look in your email, check just all sources, right? Before. Um and let me see if I missed anything. I think that's pretty much it regarding the five tips. So 
let's review wake up early log in an hour early or two hours early if you want uh or basically might be free from that before and after maybe two to th hours before two hours after uh two hours before three hours after keep that area free if you can take time off don't just say oh i'm gonna be off at 10 a.m work until 10 what if you know at work you have to go a little bit more if you're working as a dental assistant sometimes things happen you can't register that's it you missed the exam for that problem you did right for that mistake make sure you're off a little bit early make sure you have good reliable internet make sure you use a desktop or laptop and make sure and have them plugged in uh the laptop at, for sure have it plugged in and then credit card make sure you have the appropriate amount credit limit you might have a thousand credit limit but you used your credit card right so um, make sure you have enough in the credit card to pay for the exam and actually one thing i'm not sure about is if they charge tax or not so that's also another thing so you might actually need more if they charge tax uh, i'm a little bit that part i'm uh, i actually forgot if they charge tax or not we'll, we'll look into it but just make sure you have enough keep more don't don't be at uh, like at the exact point so add more to your credit card if you're doing that i would say if, if it's a thousand dollar exam make sure you have 1500 in there okay um and then the locations make a priority list of all your locations and keep it with you beside on a list write it down on a paper keep it beside you on the laptop so you could um be ready with it right um and here are the locations that have came in the previous cycles we don't know if it's going to be the same way but at least it's a reference point that we could use that's it everybody for the five tips hope that's helpful and i think it might be even useful for uh, if you're watching this video later six months later or something for the other exam it will be useful as well um, but this is made for the november 2022 register uh 22nd uh, registration date which is for the feb 2023 afk exam thank you everybody and again if you need any help with something and you want to book a consultation so that you we could guide you and you might you're interested in registering for a course let us know and we'll try to um, accommodate for that thank you everybody for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye